What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, John from the Game of Duty here. Welcoming you back to an uh, episode of some power rankings. Obviously, the NFL power rankings in the NFL Week 6 was definitely a crazy week. Honestly, I don't even know, like, where to even begin with the, these games. Like, honestly, Week 6 was a uh, big mess <laughs> that we have to go over and discuss. Um... Am I ready to discuss week six? No, but do I have to? Yes. So we have a crazy game. So let's go ahead and start with the number 32 team, the New York Jets, who aren't going to move. You get shut out by the Dolphins. <laughs> like, you deserve to be 32. The fact that you got shut out by the Dolphins just proves to everybody and their mom that you're the worst team in the league and you are, you could actually go 0-16 this year, which is just hilarious to see. Um, next, we have the Washington football team. They knocked down five spots after they had a pretty actual brutal loss last week to the... Um, I think it was... Wait, did they not even play? Oh, shoot, they didn't even play. <laughs> wow, when you drop five spots on your bye week, <laughs> I'm sorry, Washington, I didn't realize you didn't play, but I guess, you know what, the teams around you just played a lot better, they played like they are better than, oh, no, you did play, there it is, Washington against New York, I, I swore they played, I'm like, I swore I knocked you guys down for a reason, <laughs> I'm like, I don't remember you being on my bye week list, I remember it being Saints, Raiders, Chargers, and Seahawks, like, <laughs> but yeah, they had a one-point loss to the Giants, um, honestly, they look like they're cut below the rest at this point, um, it's not like they're not going to be competitive, but they are definitely definitely a struggling team right now and uh it's just they're, they're just showing it all around next we got the new york giants at 31 going up at one spot they just beat the, the football team that's literally it um they're if you looking at the giants looking at some positive things you got to look at the defense is looking pretty solid um and that's an amazing thing to look at if you're a giants fan looking towards the future i mean you could even win your division right now because your division is just that bad um but and I'm like I'm like literally not even joking when I say that. Um because yeah, but anyway, um at this point the defense it's kinda like the Bears right now, but the defense is kind of starting to carry this team in ways that you wouldn't have expected them to. Um and honestly, if their offense would step up that it, they would be much better. Um, so you're kind of looking for that offense to step up and become a better team. But right now, I just don't see it. I don't see their offense really bringing it on. But their defense is just phenomenal so far this season. So I'm hoping maybe that they can move with their defense and uh, capitalize on that. Um, next, we got Denver. They move up one spot as they beat the Patriots. A lot of people, I'm sure, are going to be telling me, why didn't you move them up more? I just didn't see enough from them to move them up more. When you chip a team down via field goals, you can't just be like, oh, we're the best team ever. You chipped them down via field goals. Your defense played well, but also Cam Newton had not been on the field and done anything for a couple weeks, um, so he just did not look like himself. Um, and the Patriots are kind of one of those teams in un unknown territory. Um, so I know I had the Patriots at six, but, uh, trust me, they're, <laughs> they're dipping. Um, but yeah, next we have the Jacksonville Jaguars. They move up a spot. Um, I actually was debating on moving them or keeping them still and moving the Broncos ahead of them, but I haven't, again, I still haven't seen enough, but Gardner Minshew is definitely struggling. This team is definitely showing a lot of problems and a lot of things that they need to fix, um, throughout the season and, uh, against man coverages, Gardner's not been great. The Lions do play a ton of man coverage. I think they play with some of the most in the league. Joy can uh, uh, correct me on that if I'm wrong. Um, but, yeah. So, next up, we have Cincinnati. They get to – oh, oops. They get to stay. They get to stay. Um, again, Cincinnati played a really good game against this Colts team. Um, but still haven't found the ways to win with Joe Burrow um, at the helm. They have not played very great opponents, but they haven't played bad opponents either, so I'm not giving them any kind of a flag or slack for that, but I haven't seen enough from them to really kind of keep them 
or move them up or do anything. Next, we got the Vikings. They have a big dip, six spots uh, to 26. Now, the Vikings lost the Falcons 40 to 23. So it was actually a pretty big loss at home after barely beating or barely losing to the Seahawks. And I think we're starting to see more and more why this team is not good enough. What makes them not good enough? Kirk again, throwing three interceptions in the first half, putting them out of the game very early. You can't trust Kirk. And this is why the Vikings aren't even in a good spot. Kirk is the seventh highest paying quarterback. Let's keep that in mind. He's paying se- being paid seventh most in the league. And he's just been doing terrible this year, not playing well, not doing good. Um, so he's got a lot of work to do if he wants to get better. Um, then we got Dallas. They moved down two spots. I know, only a two-spot drop. Like it's, I, I gave them the heavy drop of the hammer last week, and I knew this. I knew that going into this, um, that Dallas was gonna not be great. I was hoping that maybe they would play well week the first time uh, Andy Dalton goes out on the field. Um, but Zeke fumbles again and again and again. He's had fumbling issues this year, and that's scary. If your star running back has fumbling issues. Um, you don't want to see it if you're Dallas, especially when uh, you want to heavily rely on Zeke and get better with Zeke. If he's having fumbling issues, it's just not going to work out. It's not going to be well for you. So hopefully Zeke can clean up his act, but a big 38 to 10 loss is going to knock you down a couple spots, a couple pegs. Um, uh, but yeah, I'm so glad I knocked them down early. They're not looking like a contender at all they're they're looking like a flop um they're looking like their season's over um which really means you need to sign Dak as quickly as possible next the first time this team is moving up the Falcons is moving up four spots um good win against the Vikings um you really kind of need to continue that trend uh, that you did last week defense stepped up defense did what they needed to um, I want to see some more from their defense but I think I can I think we can see a little bit more from their defense I think they go against a um team i don't know if they're on by are they no they go against the lions i think we can see a little bit more of their defense at home against the lions um but uh it's really going to be a matter of fact of who what lions we're going to see are we going to see the like, lions that beat jacksonville or are we going to see the lions who um keep blowing leads <laughs> sorry joy uh, but it's true <laughs> next we got philly philadelphia after a very very close one against uh the Baltimore Ravens are going to move up a spot. They kept it close with Baltimore. Carson Wentz is kind of hopefully going to get into his own. I think we're going to hopefully start seeing separation in the NFC East. I think the Eagles are the best team there, but the fact that your best team is 23rd in the power rankings is a little bit of an issue (laughs) considering we haven't seen teams from like, we haven't seen any teams from the NFC West yet. Um, but yet the entire NFC East is here. I think we've seen one team at least from every division now besides the NFC West. Um, but yeah, like honestly, this div- this division is just terrible and it's going to be hard to watch the entire season. Um, next, we have the Houston Texans. They actually get the awesomeness of a move up of three spots. Um, Romeo Coronel kept this team in it uh, against the um, Tennessee Titans. And... This team has played four amazing teams uh, in Tennessee, in uh, Pittsburgh, in Baltimore, and Kansas City. So four top-tier AFC teams. And and if they're going to play the way that they did this week against the uh, Tennessee Titans and going to match up close with them, and um, if their team's going to get better... They made a great choice, I think, in firing Bill O'Brien because I feel like not – I don't think this team is going to be playoff worthy, no, but I feel like this team is definitely showing that they're going to be a seven-win team capability. They're definitely not out of it. They're going to be a tough out. They're going to be a team that you don't want to underestimate. They go against Green Bay naturally. They, they just have had a tough schedule to start the season, and they're basically out before the season was over or before the season even began with their schedule. I mean, their one win – was against a team that they could beat, right, against uh, the Vikings. Um, but definitely was out before they, – they were out before the season even began. I think they're going to go on a late push, and people are going to be like, oh, my God, this team is actually so much better with Romeo Cornell. Um, and it is. I'm not saying it's not. I'm just saying that he's going to get a benefit of 
a lot easier of a schedule because all their tough games are going to be out of the way. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of what I'm seeing um, from this Texas team is they're they're playing better uh, under Romeo Cronell. Um, but not enough for me to be like, oh, he should be the head coach. Next, we have the Los Angeles Chargers. I believe they also get to move up one spot, uh, beneficiary of the Vikings' massive drop um, on by. That's all I can say. Um, unnamed, which is uh, – this is the 49ers. They're going to move up a spot. Again, beneath beneficiaries of the – Vikings drop, but they did get a win against the Los Angeles Rams, and they were a team that had a potential of going up. And I was half tempted to do it; I was gonna do it, but I didn't. I couldn't. Um, the 49ers they play a, with a lot more grit and toughness last week, and I'm very proud of them as a team. But I do need to see some more from them before I'm like buying in to this 49ers ball club. Um, a great win against the Rams. As a Seahawks fan, I'm like, yes, let's go. Um, uh, they play against the Patriots this week, so I'm hoping that we get to see some, see some fun. I'm hoping that, um, the Patriots and 49ers, they keep it close because honestly, they're going to be one of those teams or games that are gonna be like, Ooh, interesting to watch. Um, in my opinion, next we got Detroit. They had a great win against Jacksonville, but it is Jacksonville. So I can't give you too much credit for the win against Jacksonville. But I can say that Detroit is one of those teams that are going to be tough. They're not like I said at the beginning of the season. I thought they were definitely going to get um, seven wins, if not be an eight and eight team. I was kind of it looks like I was wrong on that front, but I'm hoping that maybe um, they can play better. Uh, and I think they will, I think, as over the course of the season. But they definitely need to change some philosophies, do a little bit things differently. Um, and I'll see what happens with this team. Next, we got Carolina. They get to stay um, after their disappointing loss to the Bears. It's the Bears. They're defensively a powerhouse. Um, Their loss didn't make me want to move them down or do anything. So I feel like they're just in a great kind of nice gray area where there's not much to worry about. Uh, Dolphins, similar situation. They shut out the Jets. You can't move a team up after shutting out the Jets. Like... That's not like I'm not I'm not saying they're bad, but it's the Jets. So you did your civic duty <laughs> to say the least. Next we got New England. New England. The third team this season. Making a double digit drop to sixteen. Um unfortunately for New England, they when you lose to literally the thirtieth ranked team as number six number six, you could say it, it's a fluke. But also, they have not shown the ability to win in the games, uh, and to like win some of these games. Like, uh, you lost to Seattle, you lost to uh, Kansas City, so you can't beat those top tier teams. And then you go out and at home lose to the Broncos. You like, especially after you know you had COVID concerns. Um, so you had to be at home anyways. Um, it's just, it's just bad. It's very bad. Um, to see that. Next, we got Cleveland, another big dropper of the week down six spots. I thought they could hang with the big boys. And what I mean by that is hanging out with some of these top 10 teams, but then they got blown out big by the divisional Steelers. And that's the second good divisional opponent that they've gone against that they get just blown out by. So clearly they're not as good as people think they are. Um, They're still vying for the playoffs. They're still in a potential for the playoffs right now. If the season ended, they I think would be in it, but are clearly um, good against the bad teams, bad against the bad or bad against the good teams. So they're, I guess a mediocre team for me. Next, we get Arizona. They get to move up two spots, uh, going to 14. Um, they took care of business. That's all I can say. They did really good against Andy Dalton and the Cowboys. Um, offensively, you know, Kyler had a little bit of issues, but not too many. Um, some things that good teams would capitalize on more so. Um, but, yeah, they definitely were beneficiary of that injury for sure. They played Seattle two of the next three games, two, both on prime time because the NFL moved that game to prime both games to prime time so it'll be interesting to see how this game kind of happens and what happens with it knowing that it's prime time now um but yeah uh next we got indianapolis indianapolis is going to stay where they are after they ended up 
I think beating the uh yeah they beat the uh the 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 Bengals that game kind of played out exactly as we thought we it would the Bengals are just a tough out but are gonna still lose um Colts looked scary because Philip Rivers was being bad in the first quarter and then second quarter he turned on the Jets and did what he was supposed to um but the Colts are looking kind of weird and uh they're unpredictable every week. And unpredictability is usually not a good sign if you are a um, Colts fan, um, like Aaron. I, I just uh, I'm scared of that un- unpredictability, but I do think that he's better than Brissett. This whole is he gonna play or is Brissett gonna play? I think it's BS. Um, I think you stick with Philip um, unless he's like throwing you out of games completely. He hasn't been doing that. The games that you have lost, it's only been a couple points. Um, so he's not necessarily throwing you out of games. It is untimely when he is throwing picks, but it's been Philip Rivers' career. You should have known that when you signed him for $25 million. Um, next is the Oakland Raiders. They're going to stay where they are at. I said Oakland. Oopsies. Las Vegas. Um, again, they were on bye, so they get to stay. Um, <laughs> then we got the Saints, who are also on bye, so they get to stay. Um, they Nobody played better than them, I don't think. Uh the Cardinals are the only one that could have moved up, but I don't think I could have seen them move up all three spots. <laughs> Let's be fair. Um, then we got the Buffalo Bills. Buffalo is going to be ha- go ahead and also kind of stay where they are as well. I think Buffalo is still a top 10 team, but the losing to the Chiefs by nine kind of shows that you have some work to do. You're not beating the great teams, but you are going to play well within your division, win your divisional games. Cause you still have like five or three freebies, or I wouldn't even say three free, three freebies at this point. Um, but yeah, you still have some games that you can win. Um, but yeah, honestly, I see this, uh, Buffalo bills team being the NFC East winner. Um, but we'll see what happens. Then we got Tampa Bay. They moved back. <laughs> I busted their chops too quickly. Um, they moved back to number nine. Uh, that's where they were last week. They just pummeled the Green Bay Packers. Um, I definitely feel like this team is just going to kill it. They're doing great. The, um, I knew they were going to start slow. A lot of people were on that kind of train, but... I'm glad to see that they are playing back at their full potential. Um, I feel like this team is definitely a top 10 team. Going to make the playoffs, potentially win their division. Um, But we'll see kind of where they're at uh, as the season progresses. Next, we got Chicago. I had to. I didn't want to. I didn't want to. Yeah. Everybody and their mom didn't want the Bears to be in the top 10. But here's the thing. They're they're back into 2018 form. Their defense is playing with amazing strength and capability and they're just their 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 defense is going to carry them that's plain and simple i think against some of these and realistically we're going to see what happens against these teams like the rams like the uh the future games that are going to be coming up against the nfc south um but or afc south excuse me um we're going to see what happens um against some of these tougher opponents but realistically this is a 12 uh, 11 or 12 win team right now and it's kind of sad but it's true next we got los angeles uh the rams they did they move up no they stayed they played well they i didn't move them down because they didn't play i they didn't everybody around them didn't play like really bad and i feel like this team Still has the capability of doing whatever they want to. Um, 49ers are not an easy opponent, especially within the division, especially on the road, um, especially when they needed to avenge their loss to the um, the Miami Dolphins. Like, it's just, yeah, it was kind of assumed that was going to happen. Um, next, we got Green Bay. They dropped down five spots as they just get pummeled by the Buccaneers. The Buccaneers really exploited a lot of their weaknesses and things that they were having trouble with. Great coaching by Bruce Arians on that front. Um, and great job, Tom Brady and everybody else on the uh, Buccaneers ball club, really exposing a team that had been 
just flawlessly amazing, especially after a bye when you have two weeks to prep for the Buccaneers. I figured the Buccaneers were going to be the one that were out. Um, but yeah, no, it, that was a great week for the Buccaneers. Terrible made the Packers look like nothing. Um, they drop, uh, five spots though. Big loss. Again, they have some work to do. Uh, Tennessee Titans, they finally did it. They move up three spots, um, and are in the top five. The Titans look like a, an amazing ball club. They nearly lost to a divisional opponent, but again, it's a divisional opponent. So I'm not going to move them up further. Um, it's a divisional opponent. Like you can't sit here and tell me that the divisional opponent's gonna be super easy. Um, like their divisional opponents are tough, and you want to make sure you play well against them consistently. And they did it. They did that just that. So good job, Tennessee. You played a great game against the divisional opponent. Um, and I hope you guys continue to do well. Uh, next is Baltimore. They're going to drop a spot after barely losing or barely beating the Eagles. It's a game that they should have taken control of, and they didn't, and that's bad. They've had issues like that on the road specifically, um, I think at least. Let me – I can double-check that fact. Um, I feel like they – or were they at home against Baltimore? I feel like they might have been actually at home against the Chiefs. Yeah, they were. Okay. But again, on the road, you look at your games and you really haven't taken too much of a control on the road. Um, you took control of Washington. Eagles aren't that much better of a team. And yet here you are not taking control, not doing the things you're supposed to. Um, and they are, they are looking like a great team, but they're not looking like a top three. But they're in the top five still. For sure. Uh, there's nothing to like nothing else that can kind of go about it. But who I have three is Pittsburgh. They took care of the uh, they go up by two spots. Um, they took care of the freaking ball rounds like it was nothing. Um, yes, the Ravens did that, too. And that's why they're right next to each other. I feel like right now, if the Ravens and the Steelers went against each other, the Steelers defense would win over the Baltimore offense. Um, but I feel like that would be a really close game, but I feel like that right now, if those two went head-to-head, -head, it would be Steelers on top, um, and I'm going to put them where I feel like they deserve to be. Um, next. Um, well, it's Seattle's time. They're at number two. Um, good job, Seattle. Um, uh, you managed to be number two on a bye week, um, and a lot of it, again, is attributed to the fact that uh, Baltimore gets moved down to four, um, where I feel like the Seahawks are just playing better ultimately. And then the Packers, they drop five spots. So the Seahawks being on bye again, the only team on bye to move a spot other than the Chargers, but it was due to other teams, not necessarily due to them in general. Um, cause you know, they're just, yeah, Seattle played like, or Seattle has been playing great. I want to see them against the, um, Cardinals. Unfortunately I can't because they moved to Sunday night football. Um, but, uh, I'll be recording that game. You know it. Uh, okay. Next, we have Kansas City moving up a spot. Um, they beat Buffalo. They they responded the exact way we wanted them to. But anyway, um, that's I I just that's not much to talk about. Uh, so here we are. He, our playoff or not our playoff. Our um, power moves games of the week. We start out with the early morning tilt against the. Uh, Panthers and Saints. We get to see if the Saints are for real or if the Panthers are actually better than a lot of people thought they were. Um, that is a power move game of the week. The other power moves game of the week is going to come in the form of Titans and Steelers, um, where that is the, I think, a one, or the other 10 a.m. game that I would say is the power moves game of the week, um, where I feel like we're going to see who, if the Titans lose, how bad they lose if the Steelers lose, what's going to happen. That's going to be, I think the game that everybody's going to want to watch and see. And the final one in the power move is game of the week is going to be the Patriots and the 49ers. Um, I want to see how they respond. Um, the 49ers do after getting that win or how do the Patriots even respond for that loss? If the Patriots lose, they're going to drop even further. Um, and I want to see what happens at home again. 
um, after being home for like three weeks in a row, are they going to resurge? Are they going to be back to normal? But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys like this stuff, let me know in the comment section below. How do you feel about my power rankings? Am I off? Am I not? Um, and then also, if you guys like this stuff, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I do a lot more Pokemon content and stuff like that. But, you know, just hang out. Have a good time. But hopefully you guys have a wonderful day. Peace.